Good morning, Green Bethel Baptist Church. Good morning. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. And let me know that God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. That's a yes, Lord, praise right there. Amen. As we come into the sanctuary, we put on our masks to protect one another from one another. And we maintain social distancing. Amen. Give God some praise. I see you, baby, clapping your hand. It's okay. That's all right. And let me know that you know who God is. Yes, Lord, I see you, Green Bethel, as you lift those holy hands toward heaven. Yes, Lord, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all costs. How many have a blessed the Lord spirit in their soul this morning? If you don't mind, then bless the Lord with your praise. Lift those holy hands toward heaven and if you know like I know shout hallelujah 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 yes Lord glory to your holy and divine name to our very talented musical staff it was good to see you this morning amen let's bless us with a musical selection to set the atmosphere in this place Come on, church.
somebody but the Lord. That's your personal testimony. We're trying to encourage you this morning. Now just put those hands together. Like you know it was nobody but the Lord. You see, when I was in trouble, it was nobody but the Lord. This kind of trouble was deeper than what my mama could get me out of. This kind of trouble, my, my, my daddy, he couldn't get me out of it. God for who you are yes. realizing oh holy master that it was nobody but you yes. nobody but you Lord who saved us from sin yes. it was nobody but you God who gave your only begotten son yes. it was nobody but you God who allowed us to breathe the breath of life yes. just one more day it was nobody but you Lord who allowed this old heart to be one more time. It was nobody but you, God, who allowed the blood to run warm in our veins. And we're gathered here at Green Bethel Baptist Church to praise your holy and divine name. Thanking you, Father God, for all you have done, all you're doing, and for all you will do. You see, that takes a true child of God to look toward the future and know that God will do it on tomorrow. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for Green Bethel, God. We pray a special blessing upon our members, God, past, present, and future. And Lord, everyone, everything that's connected to us, Father God, we speak blessing over their lives, God. Father God, for that unsaved person, that person that's in the world, the person that's lost in sin, God, and don't even realize it. I pray, Father God, that you'll prick their heart, God, and let them know, oh, holy master, that a brighter day is coming, God. And you are the brighter day, Lord. God, we thank you, God, for the testimonies that have been offered in this place, God. We thank you for the prayers, prayers that has been made in this place, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the miracles that has been poured out in this place, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the manifestation of your spirit, God, that has taken place in this holy sanctuary. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for anointing of the Holy Spirit that abides within us. And now, God, we speak to that spirit God, and we invoke the presence of your spirit, God. Have your way in this place, God. Father God, all I'm trying to say, God, is you have free reign. You have free reign, God. Have your way, God. You have 
to do whatever it is you need to do, Lord. If it's blessing, then bless. If it's healing, then healing. If it's rebuke, reprove, correct. Then rebuke, reprove, and correct. Whatever you're doing in this season, Father God, we're here, God, as a receptive vessel, Lord. With an attentive ear, God, to hear what thus says the Spirit. And an instructive tongue, Lord, to tell someone that God is good. A receptive heart, Father God, to receive that you have given us, God. Bless our associate pastor, Dr. Sims, God. Bless our associate minister, Minister Walter Wilson, God. Bless our chairman of Deacon Board, Lord, Deacon Thomas Davis, God. God bless all the officers, members, and friends of this great church on the side of the road, God. And all of God's children said, hey, Amen. Hey, man, and hey, man. Hey, man, we ask someone to bless us with another musical selection as we prepare our hearts to hear from the Lord.
mess with that little dev if you want to when he under the wings and watch what will happen to you mess with a child of God when he's under the protection of the most high God and watch what will happen to you yes Lord yes Lord and yes Lord there is a word from God this morning it's good to see you Green Bethel I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it Thank you for the love you showed on last Sunday. My heart is still overjoyed with your expression of love on our first anniversary. The case, I told Sister Hamrick, I said, I think I'm about sick now. I done ate myself a little too much. <laughs> but I gave it a good effort. Hey, man, if you don't mind, turn with us to Mark chapter 1, verse 29. Mark chapter 1, verse 29. One of my co-workers was saying, why did you bring some cake to work? <laughs> well, mama said if you don't have enough to give everybody something, then don't give nobody enough. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a little fun in the Lord. Mark chapter 1, verse 29. And we'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Word of God says, and we stand to reverence God. I know sometimes we take little traditions for granted, but I want you to know that there's a meaning behind it. You know, the word stood for the word when the word read the word. So we stand and give the word his word. <laughs> now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife, mother, lay sick with fever tell someone that was his mother-in-law. She lay sick with fever and they told him about her at once. So he came and he took her by the hand and he lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she served them that not in your Bible? At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. The Bible says, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. For a subject matter, the importance of having saved friends. The importance of having saved friends. As I look out in the congregation, I see young people that's about to ready to start school back. God gave this word for this season because he wants to speak to you and to let you know that it's important to have saved friends. You see, most of us choose friends and in our friend circle, you can find any type of friend. You have the comedian in the group. You know that person that's always picking at you and laughing at the way you walk. You know, one of my steps, one of my steps is two of yours because my foot get a little sideways. Then you have that person in the group, you know the person in the group that's the boldest person out of the group. The person in the group that's quick to talk a little noise and even quicker to run the other way. 
And then you have a person in the group with a car. You know, you have the person in the group that can take you here and there. All I'm trying to say, be careful how you choose your friends. The importance of having a saved friend. And it is our prayer that in your friendship circle, someone in the group is saved and know how to get in touch with the all. Mighty God, if your friendship circle is missing that key aspect, then I want you to take a little time and find another friend. Because sooner or later, you need someone who know how to get in touch with the Lord. Jesus and his disciples, they went to Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and talked. And he taught as one having authority. Can I say it like this? He went to church and he taught in church and he preached in church. And people were gathered together in church. They were having church and the spirit was high because the spirit himself was doing the teaching. And the congregation was able to receive that what thus says the Lord. The word of God came through the man of God. The word of God would come by way of the woman of God. The word of God is good for reproof. The word of God is good for correction. And the word of God is good for rebuke. The point, the problem with that is we're not in the correct position to receive the word of God. Most of the time people are in church but they're not in the correct position to receive what thus says the Lord. Your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, it must be in a spiritual condition to receive that which the Lord has given. If you're not in the correct position, if you're not in alignment, then you would miss your blessing because God is in the business of casting the blessing your way. If you're not paying attention, then you will miss the blessing that's coming your way. If your hands is not in the proper position to reach up and catch your blessing when you know it have your name on it, then I want you to know you will miss what God is trying to do in your life. I'm trying to help someone now. God is in the blessing business. Are you in the receiving business? It's good to have the right kind of friend. You need someone to nudge you on the side. You know that friend that's saved, that's sitting beside you when the blessing come your way. That friend need to nudge you on the side and tell you, you know that's for you. And then you can reach up and grab it. You see, every now and again we might miss it, but that friend of yours who is saved will point you in the right direction. He points you toward Jesus and Jesus would do the drawing. Yes, Lord. That's all I'm trying to say this morning. You should already be in the correct position. It means that you should already be in a spirit of thanksgiving as you're driving down the road or something on the inside of some tent to tell you to get into a spirit of thanksgiving. Because as you look around, you're thankful for what the Lord has done to you, done for you. You're thankful for what the Lord is doing for you. You're thankful for what the Lord will do for you. You're thankful for what the Lord has done for your family, what the Lord has done for your friends. Because if he's doing for them, he'll do it for you. You must be in that spirit of praise, because God allowed you to see another new day. As a matter of fact, you should already be in a spirit of praise because the Lord is worthy of all our praise. Am I right about it? And, 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 and when you're in the spirit of praise, you want to thank God for the goodness of the Lord. Something on the inside should manifest on the outside. If you have God inside of you, then that Holy Spirit will rise up and praise His own holy and divine name. The spirit Spirit of praise on the inside of me is dying to get on the outside. So it's something about this Sunday morning. You know when you come into the 
already on fire for the Lord. And every now and again, you just want to take off running and you can't hold yourself. But all I'm trying to say is that if the Spirit of the Lord tell you to shout, then shout. If the Spirit of the Lord tell you to wave your hand, then wave your hand. If the Spirit of the Lord says clap, then clap. All I'm trying to say is praise God in your own way. Am I right about it? You can't praise Him like I praise Him. I can't praise Him like you praise Him. But if you put it all together, we'll praise and worship God. You see, the way God touched me may be different than the way God touched you. So my praise is my praise and your praise is your praise. But we offer them up to the Lord. You know that old familiar cliche that we always say, the praises go up and the blessing come down. So praise up and bless it down. Praise up and bless it down. Praise up and bless it down. That's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. Praise up and watch the blessing come down. Watch the blessing come down and fall fresh on you. Lord, as I draw closer to you, my worship would grow with intensity. If you notice, we started with thanksgiving and we ended with praise. The closer we get to the Lord, the more intense our worship should be. The more intense our praise should be. Because we're coming into the, into the presence of God. Since we're in the book of Psalms, and we've been opening with thanksgiving and praise, Let's look at Psalms 150 and 6. It says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise Him in your own way. If you have breath in your life, then give God some praise because He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Now, we know that the Spirit is high in your life. The atmosphere is conducive for receiving your breakthrough. Let me say that one more time. Since the spirit is right in your life, the atmosphere is right in your life to receive your breakthrough. God will bring the breakthrough your way, but it's up to you to be receptive and to receive that breakthrough. God is speaking to someone now. He's talking to someone. I don't know if you're in here or, or on, the, on the smart device, but the point is your breakthrough just around the corner. You see, now let's keep it moving. As you look at the text, you'll notice that it was in church and the spirit was high and Jesus was teaching. Now after church, they went to Simon and Andrew's house with James and John. Can I say it like this? They took Jesus home with them. You see, most of the time, when we leave church on Sunday, we'll leave Jesus in church on Sunday, and we, then we'll come back next Sunday, but we got it all wrong when we leave church on Sunday. Take Jesus with us, up. and if you take Jesus with you, just keep on listening. I'm going to tell you what happened. Am I right about it? Somebody know what I'm trying to say. It's good to have a saved friend, because maybe Jesus ain't with you, but that friend of yours that's saved, Jesus is with them. Jesus need to be in the mix. That's what I'm trying to say. He need to be in the mix of your circle. Yeah. They took Jesus home with them. And guess what? People in your own household, around your house, people that's connected to you will miss a blessing because you did not take Jesus home. Amen. Now, with that said, you must look at your own situation and say, God, why you skipped over me and got my neighbor? Well, maybe because you didn't take Jesus home with you. You left him in church and you're going back to see him next week. I'm going to be honest with you. That's how some Christians are. They'll come to church and get filled on Jesus, but then they'll leave and leave Jesus in church and won't come before the Lord until next Sunday. But what a happen is, God called you home before that next Sunday. Stay in his presence. That's the point I'm trying to make. Stay in his presence and where you go, he go. Take the Lord with you. Simon's mother-in-law, the Bible says, Simon is Peter, by the way. She was sick and in bed with a high fever. 
She was so sick, she was right on the cusp of dying. It's good to have saved friends. If you're not saved, then get saved. If you're still not convinced that Jesus is real, then befriend a person who know that he is. Because sooner or later, you're going to need someone on your side who know how to get in touch with the Lord. I'm trying to help you now. If you don't know how to get in touch with the Lord yourself, then maybe that friend that's saved will get down on their knees and pray for you. Your parent is saved will get down on their knees and pray for you. You wonder why this generation is so prosperous and so spoiled because we're living on the praises of our foreparents. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for that saved person. Mark says, Mark says in his book, he says that they spoke to Jesus. This indicates their closeness with the Lord. They didn't yell and say, hey, Jesus, come over here. The Bible says they simply spoke to Jesus. That alludes to the fact that Jesus was close by their side. So in my holy imagination, I can see him whispering in his ear, Lord Jesus, help my mother-in-law. Am I right about it? Maybe Mark, maybe, maybe Peter didn't say it himself, but maybe one of his friends said, the Bible says, and they, which means it was more than one. They spoke to Jesus. This indicates how close they were. They is plural, more than one. So you need to have more than one person in your circle who know how to get in touch with the Lord. Where two or three is, God says he will be in the midst. Distance. It does not separate them from the Lord. The fact that they spoke to Jesus. They told him about her at once. They didn't wait because remember they had just left church and the spirit was high. So let me paint a picture of what happened in church as Jesus was teaching. You know how the unclean spirit came and Jesus had to rebuke the unclean spirit. Jesus had to tell the unclean spirit to be quiet, just sip it, and then his fame immediately grew, and the overflow went out from the church into the house. So now they're in the house, and they spoke to Jesus because they had just witnessed his miraculous healing power. The Bible says, that when they spoke to Jesus immediately at once, they didn't wait. If you have something that you're struggling with, then speak to Jesus immediately at once and don't wait. Jesus, he responded. They spoke and Jesus responded. Jesus responded to their faith. And he responded to their faith with power. What I'm trying to say is faith to power. He responded to their faith with the power to heal. Healing power was released in that house. The healing power was released around that house. The Bible says at sunset, the crowd came and was healed. Let me say that again. The crowd came and was healed. A lot of people came to Jesus and they were healed and set free. How close are you to the Lord when Jesus respond to you? Jesus gave a threefold response. First, I want you to look at the progression that Jesus was making. At first, Jesus came to her. They spoke, and he came. They spoke, and he came. You pray, and he come. You pray, and he come. And Jesus came 
He came to her. That means that he moved in her direction. Yes. He drew closer to her in a moment of need. They spoke and he came. In your moment of need, Jesus would draw closer to you than he ever has been. Jesus is in your right, in your direction. But the problem is, when Jesus moved toward us, we moved further from him. And I can speak for myself because I've been there. You see, when Jesus has moved toward us, we'll turn and run the other way. But sooner or later, you need to stop and stand still and feel the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Jesus is trying to move in your direction. Stop running. The Lord is only trying to heal you. He's trying to heal you from yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the point that we're trying to make. Next, Jesus took him by the hand. You see how he progressively get closer and closer. He came to her. Now he's standing over her and he reached down and took her by the hand. Right now, Jesus is reaching for someone in this place. He's reaching down from his throne, sitting on the right hand of God, reaching toward her, and he's reaching for you. Yes, yes he is. He took her by the hand. Each level of Jesus' response became more and more personal. Jesus took him by the hand to signify that he's there to help us along the way. Uh -huh. Now all you need to do is just reach your hand up toward heaven and grab Jesus' hand and let him help you along the way on this journey downhill on earth. We're going to need some help sometime. And who can help you? Nobody but the Lord. Grab him by the hand and let him help you on the way. Amen. People miss their blessing. Because they won't grab Jesus by the hand. Am I right about it? You see, God may have something in his hand that he's trying to put in your hand. But because you won't lift your hand and open your hand, you, you will miss the blessing that God is trying to put in your hand. So grab on to the hand of the Lord and receive your blessing from the Lord. And finally, that third response. Jesus raised her up. I want you to see he came to her. He grabbed her by the hand. And then Jesus raised her up. Remember she was in the bed sick and couldn't get well. With a high fever and still couldn't get well. He grabbed her by the hand and he raised her up. He had physical contact with her. That means that he had to put forth the effort to raise her up out of that bed. And when he did, she responded. When she felt the Lord pulling on her hand, she just raised right on up out of that bed. So your response should be, when God is pulling on you, your response should be to raise up and meet the Lord. Once you're touched by the Lord, you'll never be the same. The Bible says immediate results and a grateful response. Watch this. The immediate results and a grateful response. After Jesus rebuked the fever, the results was instantaneous. It happened at once. The fever left. And Peter's mother-in-law was healed and she got up and she began to wait on them. The Bible says she waited on them. Can I say it like this? She got up and she fixed them dinner. Am I right about it? Because she was thankful for what the Lord had done for her. You see, that's, here's the point I'm trying to make. When you're thankful for what the Lord has done for you, then you should have an immediate response. You should have a response of seventude. You should be able to rise Rise up, rise up out of the muck, mortar, and clay, and begin to serve the Lord. Am I right about it? And you're serving with gladness. You don't see in the text uh, where the woman was serving Jesus uh, with a crown on her face. Uh, the Bible simply says that she got up uh, and she waited on them. Am I right about it? Somebody uh, need to get up and wait on the Lord. Am I right about it? And I don't mean wait as in sit down uh, with your hands under your bottom. I mean wait on the Lord. It means to get up and you do something for the Lord. You see, uh, our problem is uh, we'll take from God and won't give to God. Am I right about it? We are good and we're good and taking what God has to give us. But when it comes time, to give the Lord our chance to serve it. We sit back down, but be careful, because if you sit down, 
someone in your friendship circle who know how to get in touch with the Lord. You notice the friends, the disciples that he called, they all knew the Lord. The Bible doesn't identify which one spoke. It simply says that they spoke. The important part is that someone speak to the Lord. That's your part. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord for yourself. Speak to the Lord for your family and friends. Speak to the Lord for that person that don't know God. Because when we make it to heaven, we don't want them to be lost because we didn't speak to the Lord on their behalf. Let us stand. The point is, people would take from God but don't give to God. It's easy to take from the Lord, but the tough part is to give back to the Lord. Look, God gave you his only begotten son. Now you can give yourself back to the Lord with reasonable service for the Lord. You may not be a preacher or a deacon, but it's something you can do in the kingdom of the Lord. Even if it's just something as smiling and handing out a fan, it's something you can do in the kingdom of God. There's a place for you. If you're not saved, this is your moment. This is our formal invitation for you to come, confess, believe, and receive. Confess your sin, confess your need for God. Believe that Jesus is God's only begotten Son. Yes. Believe that He died on the cross for you and receive eternal life. Yes. I'm not saying that you won't see death on this side of the earth, but what I am saying is that eternal life after death comes in judgment. That's uh -huh. the eternal life that I'm speaking of. If everyone here is all saved, then now is the time till we speak to the Lord just as they did in this text. We know someone who is not saved. Speak to the Lord on that person's behalf. You don't have to speak to me, but speak to the Lord and he will respond. He will respond on your faith. Speak to the Lord.